And we are back on the Zero Hour. I'm your host, Richard R.J. Escal. At the top of the hour, I talked about the need to pass the PRO Act as a first step towards reinvigorating the labor movement in this country. It's critically important. This is also a milestone week in labor history because it was uh, 37 years ago this week that the miners' strike began in Great Britain. Now, for anyone alive and living in Great Britain at the time, uh, that memory uh, is seared into them. They will uh, never forget because the miners' strike was uh, a life-changing event for hundreds of thousands of people. It was it changed the political trajectory, the economic trajectory of Great Britain uh, in ways that are still echoing today profoundly. And it uh, devastated larger parts of that country. That's you know, just briefly going over it. That strike lasted for a year. It uh, involved 165,000 miners uh, who endured a year of poverty and hardship, but had enormous levels of support and solidarity among each other in their communities internationally, and so on. But at the end of the day, Margaret Thatcher broke that strike. The miners failed. Their mines were closed uh, over the following years, and many communities just died altogether. Now, coal is, you know, it's uh, obviously we need to move away from it. Uh, and for economic reasons, a shift was taking place then as well. The coal mines uh, closed in Germany, too, but uh, in that country, as opposed to Great Britain, uh, there was planning. Uh, there was a change over uh, countries and uh, I'm sorry, cities and counties didn't die the way they did in Great Britain because they spent five years trying to get it right. But the brutal insensitivity of uh, the philosophy of Margaret Thatcher, Ronald Reagan and so many that have followed them meant they didn't care about those people or what happened to them. They wanted the miners' union broken. They wanted the ability to hire and fire them solely based on profits uh, and not have the timing adjusted based on social need. And yet the same people today, 37 years later, still can't understand why they lost, why why their vision of uh, global uh, financialization was rejected by voters in these parts of Great Britain, which is a primary reason why Brexit passed. Now, I'm not defending uh, the decision uh, to pass Brexit, but you can't ruin people's lives and then expect them to follow your lead when you and your fellow members of the elites tell them this is the way you need to go. They saw Brexit as a way to reassert their own autonomy. I think in many ways they were tragically wrong, but that's what I mean when I say the reverberation of this strike in the aftermath are still affecting us today. 